Hello YouTube, welcome to episode 3 of Legends of the Past. And I have something very special for you today because I have found a man that I'm certain none of you have ever heard of who was actually born in France. He is one of my co-citizens. And interestingly enough, he wasn't a bodybuilder. For the first time in this series, I'm introducing a strong man. And I actually think that I'm going to make it a staple because you'll see that there was a lot of correlation between bodybuilders and strongmen back then more than there is now. And those people still deserve the praise and they can serve as great inspiration for modern naturals. So let's discuss today the interesting history of Louis Apollon, aka the emperor of athletes. Louis Apollon was actually born Louis Uni. In 1862, Apollon was just a nickname he received. And as I said, he was born in France. He was from a family of well-known giants, meaning that everyone in his family, every male especially, was known to be very tall, to the point that his own grandfather was six feet eight. Now, nowadays, six feet eight is already gigantic, but you have to keep in mind that this is France, all right? And back then, the average male height was five feet four. So six feet eight was a four foot and four inches taller than the average dude. Can you imagine this? It's as if you walked into someone who were seven feet three or seven feet four nowadays. They wouldn't even look human. Like the guy back then was, was regarded as a demigod, as a monster. And the entire family was like that. Every single male was really, really tall. And the family in particular, beyond that, that particularity, was also well known because there were knights. There were very famous French knights, and they actually settled the region where Louis was born, meaning that he had, he had in him the blood of the people who fought for the land, who defended the land during the crusade, before the crusade, during the invasions that plagued the Middle Age back then. If you know your history and you especially pay attention to French knights, it should remind you of someone by the name of Godefroy de Bouillon. Godefroy de Bouillon was a very famous French knight who was known for being very tall and very thick. He was monstrously strong. And if you read some things like, uh, uh, what is the, the name of that thing again? Uh, Game of Thrones. Some of the characters of Game of Thrones are actually inspired from French knights that were especially big, especially strong. Louis was the direct descendant, and he was, in pretty much every aspect of the tomb, a worthy descendant of these giants, because from a very young age, he was already built. People were thinking when they would see him on the street that he was a grown adult when he was 13, 14, because he was already taller and bigger than the average male. And that was, of course, genetics, but it also came from the fact that, because of course it was 1862, children worked. He didn't go to school. He actually worked in the fields. And his favorite thing to do, and the thing that made him famous in his neighborhood, was that he would lift bags of salt and he would carry the bags of sea salt from a place to another. Some of these bags weighed upwards of a couple hundred pounds. And he was still a boy at the time. He was 11, 12. So can you imagine this? He would carry these bags in his arms, on his shoulder, and it was no big deal for him. It amazed people, of course, because it was absolutely incredible to witness. That strength was also demonstrated when he would impress people, he would entertain people by lifting a cartwheel above his head and then pressing it for reps. So these are big, hundreds of pounds cartwheels that are very cumbersome to lift. And most men actually struggled to push the cartwheels when they were empty. Not only could Louis push them with rocks in it and sea salt and all sorts of hundreds of pounds, but on top of that, he could lift it above his head, something that no one could do. No one in the entire country where he was, the entire place where he was, could do that. And that led him to try and run away from the life he was living because he realized at an early age that he could make a living off of that insane strength. So at the age of 14, he left to join a traveling circus. And good luck preventing him from doing that. I mean, the kid at that age, right, he was 16, he was six feet three, 
and 250 pounds at 16. He was still a teenager. Nowadays, if you gave these stats to someone on YouTube Fitness, they would tell you that this is natural. They would even tell you that this person has been taking drugs for years and years. And yet, this was someone who existed back when steroids weren't a thing. So yes, he was a genetic freak, but it's impressive to see that the limitations of the human potential is truly infinite. There are no limitations. And it's something that he would prove throughout his life. He was said by the people around him to be unnaturally strong, but also fast. He was very athletic. It's the reason why he was called the emperor of athletes. He wasn't just a brute. He had every single physical cap and stats pushed to the absolute maximum and he dominated every single sport he participated in. For example, he would wrestle with people and he actually wrestled with professional wrestlers back when he was an amateur that knew nothing about the sport and he would win every single time. He never lost a single wrestling match. He was that gifted at sports in particular and it's something that was reflected in his physique. He apparently had very large wrists and forearms and hands especially that allowed him, as I said, to lift a wheelbarrow with extended arms above his head. And so he tried and strived to make a living out of his body because when you have a gift, might as well use it. And he started competing, as I said, in wrestling where he demolished everyone and never lost once. And then also Strongman. Strongman was the natural continuation of what he was already doing back then. So again, picture this, young kid from France, Family of giants, ancestors are all giants. He himself is very tall, six feet three, very big, naturally muscly, and he arrives in the strongman scene. What is going to happen? Well, of course, he immediately became a favorite of people and he quickly received the title of king of human strength at an early age. It's, this is how impressive Louis Apollon was. He just was a natural. He was just incredibly gifted at lifting things. And some of the feats of strength that he showcased include, for example, pinch gripping a 175 pounds chunk of iron. Okay? Pinch grip. Okay, not a solid grip. He would pinch a plate that was made, custom made for him, that weighed 180 and he was able to pinch grip it. That has been documented. I don't know many strong men that could replicate that feat of strength nowadays, even with the drugs. He would utilize that same exact weight and perform what is known as a muscle out. So he would muscle out, meaning he would grab the weight and then he would quote unquote snatch it at, at face height and he would hold it there. 180 pounds in one hand, just like this, maintaining it like this. This is a feat of strength that you don't see a lot nowadays. It's not really in strongman anymore. But can you imagine this? It's the equivalent of trying to grab a barbell with 180, first off, snatch it to your face, and then hold it like this with one, hand, one arm extended. It's almost impossible. And yet he was able to do that for time. He would do it for a very long time. And the way he would do it, because he didn't have a barbell back then, he took four 20 kilo block weights, so a total 180, he would run a handkerchief through the chains of the male and then he would grab that handkerchief and he would snatch it to arm's length. And the thing is that back then, when people saw him do that, of course they tried because he made it look easy. He made it look effortless. So they came up, they tried and not a single person could even just as, as much as take it off of the ground. No one was able to. He would just grab those handkerchiefs, those towels, and do it like it was nothing, which frustrated people because it looked like a trick. It looked like he knew something that people didn't know, but it wasn't the case. It's just that he was incredibly strong. And the thing is that back then, keep in mind, the shows that he was running weren't the shows that we see nowadays. Back then, the audience was allowed to participate. So you could be, in a sense, impressed or you could be frustrated and want to prove that you could do it as well and actually go up on stage and try it. And it was part of the show because if you actually manage to do it and to best the strong man, in this case, Louis, you would gain money, you would be paid. But of course, no one was ever able to do that. Not once in his entire career did anyone manage to do that. 
And that included strong men, because of course, it wasn't limited to normal people. Other strong men could come to your show and just rub your thunder and lift more weights than you and take the money home. But every single time this happened to Louis, he won. And at some point, other strong men would just show up to watch him lift. They knew they couldn't compete, so they just observed him out of admiration. Back then, there was frustration, of course, but mainly for, from normies, meaning that the people who were actually informed and the other strongmen that competed against him respected him because they knew that they simply couldn't hold a candle to his absolutely God-given strength. But as opposed to these strongmen that tended to do more circus-type stuff, Louis was really focused on weights and weights only. And he sort of started that train, meaning that he's the one who started to, sh to, uh, to funnel strongmen towards weights in particular and a specific type of weight, where before it was even more widespread than it is nowadays. There was even more variety. And something he was very uh, famous for doing is he didn't just buy weights. He didn't just have them custom made. Most of the time he made them himself. So what he would do is he would go to a junkyard and he would just collect things he could lift. And he wasn't too regarding when it came to what he would actually be able to lift or the ergonomy of anything. He would literally just pick heavy things, weld them together and then lift them. And that is how the very famous Apollon wheels were born. He's actually the person who made these wheels. They are named after him. It was his most famous lift. So picture this, you and I, we want weights, we go on Craigslist, we go to Walmart, we go on Walk.com and we buy it and it gets delivered to our houses. Louis would just take a straw down the junkyard, picture something that's big and heavy and just put it on his shoulder, bring it home and then put it on stage and lift it for people. It's as simple as that. And if you're interested, that very same Apollon wheels that was crafted by Louis and lifted by him still exists. So if you want to go on a pilgrimage to France, it is still available. You can see it, it's in a museum nowadays. And it was made out of railway wheels that weighed a total of 366 pounds that he just put together. So he showed up at the junkyard, he saw two massive wheels that used to be on a train and said, hmm, you know what? This is typically the type of things that I want to lift. All right. So he grabbed it, welded it to a barbell that was this thick, and just went on his merry way. He actually had to find a way to get that thing to his house. How do you think he did that? With a U-Haul truck? No, he put the wheels in his arms and he carried them one by one to his house. This is the type of man that we're dealing with. This was Louis Apollon, who was, as I said, incredibly dominant and beloved. People actually loved him. The other competitors loved him to the point that one of the competitors, someone who was very interested in strongmen at the time, by the name of Debonnet, wrote a book called Les Rois de la Force, in which he documented each strongman at the time, and he dedicated a large portion of that book to Louis. If you are someone who loves all-time strongmen, I recommend you get a PDF copy of that book. It's actually excellent. It's going to show you that the roots and the excellence of both natural strongmen and natural bodybuilding were already there back then. But all of, all of the strongmen of course, Louis was the most dominant. And when you look at his physique, if you want to go on Google image and type Louis Uni or Louis Apollon, you're going to see it. He was jacked as fuck. He had a six pack on his lower back, which some strong men have nowadays. Some of them are on drugs. Back then, keep in mind, he was natural. He was able to have that level of muscularity. Even though he had a ton of body fat, his lower back was just so thick that it popped through the fat. He was also super yoked. He had a massive upper back and huge biceps too, massive biceps. And in terms of physique, that put him above the rest. He wasn't just dominant in terms of strength. Even his body was immediately, evidently superior. When you look at strongmen from back then, they were jacked, don't get me wrong, but he was on another level completely. And the funniest thing is that there are comparisons of him as opposed to other athletes or people who were considered huge at the time, which you can also access. My favorite is the side-by-side -side comparison of arms between Apollon and a laborer. So someone who was working in the field and who was said back then to be a monster in his own right. 
compared to Louis, he looks like a kid. He looks like he has spaghetti arms, and yet he doesn't. His arms might be as big as mine. It's just that Louis' arms were just in, a, in another dimension. They were gigantic. And that comparison also showed that he had gigantic hands, and these hands were the reason why his grip strength was completely unmatched. To the point that, again, that Apollon wheel that he was so famous for, that he gave his name to, he was the only person that could lift it for a very long time. For one simple reason. It's not even that the other strongmen couldn't get it up. It's just that they couldn't even grab it. It was like a super thick axle bar that would require to have the end of an auger to be able to actually hold on to. But he could do it like no big deal, like it was no problem. The rest of his body was also very impressive, especially the arms and legs. Nowadays, you see strongmen who are more torso dominant, so they have big trunks, they have huge backs, etc. But for him, it was the limbs. He was very limb dominant. And he had over 20 inches calves and 18 inches forearms. These are gigantic measurements. And so he, again, looked tremendous. He was monstrously big. He wasn't shredded by any means, but he had so much muscle that he was impressive. And if, again, you get a chance at a copy of Le Roi de la Force, look at the pictures. He makes other men look like toddlers, like babies. And yet these guys were huge. There were strong men of back then. They were still pretty big. It just didn't make a difference for him. He would mug every single person that just entered his circle, right? The orbit of his mass was just too tremendous for anyone to be able to compete. And that transferred also to the stage. He had what can only be described as superhuman grip strength. And one of his most famous feet of strength beyond the Apollon wheels was the show, the, 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 the spectacle called The Escaping Prisoner, where he would bend iron balls to be able to squeeze his body through. So picture this. On the stage, there was iron balls, like a cage, like a prison jail. And beyond the cage, you see a dark figure, a gigantic dark beast. And as it's, it's making its way through the scene, you can see that it's actually Louis Apollon, the emperor of Afrits. And as the show starts, you see him grab those, uh, you see him grab the cage and you see him actually pull and use his grip strength. And before you know it, both balls are bent to the point that there's enough space for his body, his 250 pound body, to squeeze right through. He would do that every single night without fail. And of course, they would reuse the same cage. So they would send it to a blacksmith. He would put it back together and he would do it again to the point that the blacksmith started to become annoyed at this and he decided to prank Louis. So one night, what that guy did is instead of just repairing them, he added steel and he tempered the balls to make them much tougher to actually pull. So instead of being just iron, they became pure steel, as close as pure steel as possible, which should mean that it's completely impossible to actually to actually pull. They should remain unmovable. And yet, on that night, Apollon went on stage, tried to do his normal trick of pulling iron balls, which is already tough enough, and he just couldn't do it. And as he was struggling to get through, his wife, that was in the audience, started to scream at him, because apparently Louis was very well known for being a lazy bone. So a lot of the time he didn't like to work very hard, which, by the way, is insane because it means that the vast majority of the weights he lifted were easy. He would lift 80% of his one rep max because he didn't want to have to struggle. That also means, keep in mind, that he didn't really train, meaning that he had his hard labor job as a kid that developed his body, of course. But beyond that, as a strong man, he wouldn't repeat. The only moments he would train was during the show itself. And yet, on that night, when his wife started screaming at him to actually get it done, he managed to pull iron bars apart far enough to be able to go through. Of course, after that, he was completely burnt out and he excused himself. He couldn't continue the show, but people were still in awe at that display of strength. And that was that for the night. And that's something that he did time and times again, which paradoxically is also the reason why he wasn't more well-known and why you have never heard of him is because 
he made everything look so easy that people are not interested. That's the paradox of being too strong. Because he could lift weights that no one could touch and he would do it without a sweat, people thought that it was either a trick or that it wasn't that impressive. You know how normies are. They don't know what, they don't know what is what. Like you can tell someone that you can lift 300 pounds on the deadlift and they're going to think that you're the strongest man on earth. But then on a second thought, you show them a 700 pound deadlift and they don't think, they don't know what it means because they don't have an idea of what weight is. That's sort of what happened back then times 15 because people were just completely unknowing. They had no information. So people didn't really find his show that impressive or interesting because he wasn't much of a showman. It's not enough to be strong as a strong man. You also have to be a performer, at least back then. It was more of a circus act. You had to make a show for people, make down night. And Louis just didn't want to do that. He just lifted weights and that's it. And so that led to his career going a little bit off the rail because even though he was very dominant back then, he never attained the level of fame that he should have gotten due to his strength. But that didn't change the fact that his public image was that of a demigod. And if you go and you look at the old portrayals of him for his shows, the, the pamphlets that would be given on the street, the way he was depicted was always as a Roman. He was always depicted as a soldier. And usually he had a lion at his feet, a lion that he had, he had defeated. That's the image that people had of him, of an ancient gladiator. And it's the aura that he gave off too. I used him in the thumbnail, but if you again look at his pictures, he had a very serious turned face with cold, piercing eyes. He fit the bill perfectly. If he had been born, when Steve Reeves was born, he would have became a movie phenomena, for sure. He would have been utilized for Hercules like this because he fit the bill. He had hams for eggs, massive arms. Everything was perfect to play the role of someone who, are, who was not entirely human, who might have been a Nephilim, per se. Now, this also meant that because of that image, even though his shows weren't that popular, he himself, as a man, was incredibly famous in France because he put France in the map of strongmen. After him came other French strongmen that also accomplished a ton of things, but he was one of the first, to the point that men whose wives were pregnant would bring them to Apollon so that they would touch his arms because they believed that it would give them strong male offsprings. That's the level of alpha chad masculinity that this guy was at. He could be at a restaurant and a line of dudes would show up to him with their pregnant wives to touch his biceps because they thought it was like a lucky charm. It was good juju because if you touch Louis Apollon, some of his greatness would rub off and your kid would be born male and they would be born strong. He was almost a divinity back then. But again, he was more of an athlete than a showman and never managed to monetize. So he never really made it big. He, also, he was also not money driven at all and quite lazy at the same time. And people would take advantage of it, which is insane when you think about it, because we're talking about a guy who's six feet three, has enough strength to pull your head right off your shoulders like this, like a corkscrew, and yet, there still existed people to, to actually take advantage of his kindness and his naivety, which goes to show also that it's good to develop a physique, but if you don't have a personality that's actually assertive to defend your own wolf, people are always going to find a way to take advantage of that. And sadly, that's what happened to him. He eventually got injured during one of his famous stunts where he would hold two cars via ropes looped around his arms. So he would stand in the middle, like, like sort of like an, I think it's called an Atlas or Hercules old, but instead of pillars, it was cars driving in each direction. And most of the time he, wa he would have no problem. He would hold them in place. They wouldn't budge an inch. But on that particular night, he had a very severe injury that took him out completely because it was 1880 something and surgeries just did not exist. So he was not able to perform anymore after that tragic accident. After that, he worked some menial jobs and sadly died of throat cancer because he was a lifelong smoker. Again, goes to show also that just because you're gifted with a very athletic body doesn't mean that you can just shrug your shoulders and not take care of your health. 
even though he was someone who trained outside of that, he did not take care of himself, and that eventually ended up costing him his life. He died way too young for someone with the vitality that he had. His ancestors were known for living very, very old. Despite their size, he was one of the first that died young, sadly. But it's not something that I want to end this video on because it's not the legacy that he left us. We Apollon was more important in that he was the perfect representation of human potential. And Debonet, the man who wrote Les Rois de la Force himself, remarked that it was sad for a force of nature such as him to die in that fashion. It's not the way a man like him should have died. He should have died performing on stage or fighting a lion. This would have been suited deaths for a man of his caliber. But sadly, he, he wasn't that lucky and he died a very painful death. And yet, he showed humanity what a noble human machine could do. And that's how he became a legend. And that's how I hope we can remember Louis Apollon as someone who was the pinnacle of strength and size, even for his time, and the representation of what we can achieve, what we can do, with or without good genetics. Because if someone like him could just be lazy and still manage to achieve these crazy feats, imagine what he could have done if he actually applied himself. That, to me, is the final message of this video, and that closures this Legend of the Past segment, that number three. Regardless of the cards that you're gifted, be them very good, like Louis Apollon, or mediocre, you still got to play the game. And if you play intelligently enough, you're going to make it very far. If we look at these people from the past who did not have all of that modernity, they might have been put in a situation where it was more complex to build muscle and strength, but they still managed. And we need to be able to reinvoke and summon some of that because it is always something that we can call upon to remind ourselves that the potential is there. It's just up to us to unveil it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.